So I don't know if you got a chance to take a look at the, the video we saw with this little guy, this little squat guy, and the proportions and how they influence things like someone's ability to squat. And that's really part of what makes something client defined is taking a look at that individual and how they're built, what their individual ranges of motion are in individual joints and, and figuring out whether they should be doing that or not um, for a given goal, how might we modify it for them? How can we even get them to squat in a more mechanically viable position? Now I hear a lot of people say things like, well, that, that thing's a piece of metal you know, and how does that relate to a real individual? And well, the thing is, it's, it's meant to be a model representing skeletal proportions. And yes, there are other factors, like the range of motion we mentioned, but realize there's also structural influences in range of motion, as we mentioned in the video. And so, this is a very real, a very real interpretation of how some people were built. Now, I've had some people say, that it's, it's, I, I've never seen that before, it's only about dorsiflexion. I, I can't help it if you haven't seen that. We rarely see things that we haven't looked for. So if you didn't know this was an, an option, you may not have seen it in any of your clients. It might be right in front of your face all the time. So if you haven't seen it, I would suggest it's because you haven't looked because I see it all the time, all over the place. So take a look at some, some friends of ours. I'll show you this one guy, and I hope you can see the, the video well enough. Let me make sure. So uh, this guy's built, I mean, you can look at his muscle and all that stuff. The thing I want you to look at here in this particular video is his, are his proportions. And when he gets down to the bottom here, um, you can see pretty plainly that his floor to, I wish I could get that to stay off completely, go away, that his floor to the knee is very different, in fact, slightly longer. And these are not high heeled shoes, right? These are those Converse type guys. And his knee to, to hip femur, is very, very different. He is really pretty built to squat, and even with that, he has to alter his center of mass to make it more forward to keep from falling down, right? Because if he brings his arm back, his line, his center of mass will be behind that virtual restraint that I represented with that piece of metal. So this guy, you know, as he adds load, it's going to change his center of mass, especially as he adds it up high, it's going to change things. But he's going to go a little bit wider, and that's still going to alter his ability. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about, is how you make adjustments on people. This, this little bit of width added in here, if I can back him up a second. Oh, come on, dude. He adjusted his feet just a little wider, and it gives, it gives the perception that he's um, even shorter through here. So one of the things I probably wouldn't recommend is that you keep putting more and more stuff under people's heels. Pretty much what their shoes come with, a little bit of rise in their shoes, is enough for most folks, okay? The thing you can do is start to change the stance ever so slightly and check and monitor and see how it influences as you incrementally change the width of the stance as well as the slight angle of the stance. So that's pretty cool how that can create a foreshortening effect where the length of the femur alters the anterior posterior um, uh, influence of the knee and the hip. But take a look at this other guy because there's a lot of people out there going, oh I've never seen anybody like that. That, that doesn't exist. Those things are like uh, you know, Loch Ness monsters, those are myths. I want you to take a look at this guy on the way down here. And he has no shoes on, but I want you to start to see, you can tell already, his proportions, floor to knee, are very much unlike the previous guys. Really short right here, really long right here, and much like I showed you with the little squat dude here, the metal guy, we have the ability to adjust that on here, but he doesn't. His trunk, his trunk length is really short. Now watch this poor guy as he squats down with his feet relatively close together, roughly hip width. So he gets down there, and uh, guys, he is exactly like I showed you in the other video with my little metal squat dude, because he's much longer here, and because of that, his, he's, that's, that's considerable dorsiflexion. He's not limited there. And by the way, those of you go that think it's all about dorsiflexion, and you think dorsiflexion is always limited by the gastroc, the gastroc is never the problem in a squat, ever. Where did you learn anatomy? Because when this, once the knee's bent, there's slack in the gastroc, relatively speaking. The, uh, the, the, the chance that it's tight and limited dorsiflexion, you better start looking for something else if you think it's gastroc. So uh, rethink that, please. So this guy's proportions, we can, Understanding this client and letting his body define 
his ability to squat, not our preconceived choreographed notions of squatting, independent of goal or individual. We can modify what he does, and in essence, modify how it affects his back, how it affects the muscles that are participating, all that kind of stuff. So take a look at this next thing. Come on up, dude, get up out of there. All right, so let's see what we had him do here first. I think we went with a little bit of width. Oh, he's just repeating. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so there he is again, same deal. Trying to get lower, can't go lower. Remember I told you about that? Oh, I can't go lower. He's got plenty of knee flexion, plenty of hip flexion. He can't go lower because of the virtual restraint created by, if he goes lower, he'll fall down. Now, there he adds some width. So watch how this changes things. And it's a little tiny bit of width change. It's not severe. You can tell right now the foreshortening thing I mentioned. That from this point of view, when you take a femur that's here, and I angle it, away from you on one side or toward you on one side, in essence, the anterior posterior distance is altered. How far back the butt goes and how far forward the knee goes, which therein allows a different overall trunk position and changes the forces on the spine as well as the musculature you're trying to train. So this guy now is not going to feel his low back as the primary thing. He may actually feel some quads and of course he'll feel a proportion of hips here because ultimately his line of force is right here, if you can see my, my, my indicator, uh, going from roughly midfoot probably with a moment arm about right there to the knee, a moment arm right there to the hip, which is pretty typical, roughly a two-third, one-third thing. And his low, his low back is, he's got a much happier low back right now. So now we're going to see, yes, we could play the game with this guy with a relatively short tibia or floor to knee thing. What if we, what if we uh, blocked up under his heels? And that's not an uncommon thing. I think if you're ever going to do that, you need to use like little strips of rubber, three-eighths of an inch, eight, half inch at the most. But he's going to actually, oh, he's going to do a wider. Oh, he goes even wider. This is great. See, that's, that's the way a squat's supposed to look. He looks like he's built a squat now because we adjusted him based on how he's built. So this next one is pretty cool. We put some, eh, it's an inch and a quarter underneath his heels and he gets to stay more vertical. It starts to be akin to a, a front squat. And I'm not sure, in essence, this is bolstering up his dorsiflexion. We've leaned his tibia more forward and I'm not sure that's the best way to do this because we do alter patellofemoral forces dramatically by doing that. Now you've probably heard people say, oh, this is not bad, this is bad, this is bad on your knee when your knee goes in front of your toe. Guys, it's not the knee. If you've ever heard that, I don't care who said it, they're wrong. I don't care what they had behind their name, they're wrong. It's not the knee. It's the patellofemoral forces. And guys, we have got to stop making these silly sound bites that this is good and this is bad and everybody should squat. Regardless of who they are, regardless of how they built, Maybe if we modify things, maybe if we understand individual biomechanics, but most of the stuff that's being said out there about squats, they are not magic unless you make them magic for the individual. We gotta know what we're doing.